We're so blessed today to have as our guest, Mike Winger. He's a Bible expert. Jesus in the Bible actually talked more about judgment and hell and heaven than anybody else. And so here's a quote from the words of Jesus himself. He says, um, he t- talks about his, his, his final judgment of the world. Bible expert. That he's the one who's going to be judging the world, that Jesus himself will actually do this. In his first coming, he did not judge, but in his second coming, he comes to judge. So we're in a time of grace right now. But in Matthew 25, 46, Jesus says that there's two groups of people. One group goes away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous, the other group, goes into everlasting or eternal life. Expert. And so basically, if you're going to take Jesus's word seriously, if you take his word seriously about heaven, you got to take his word seriously about hell. Because he talks about both of them in the same sentence. And that there's two groups of people. One eternal life, one et- eternal judgment. Bible expert. Oh my God! Several years ago, my lovely daughter, Alana, drove her car directly into the ditch. It was late at night, it was in the winter, and it was on a country highway. Miles from anyone. Several miles from where I live. I had to drive there, shovel her out, call the tow guy, wait for him, Haul her out several hours later. In the same way, Mike Winger has just taken 49 seconds to drive the truth of Matthew 25:46 directly into the ditch. This may take me days to haul out. I'll try to keep it under 15 minutes. I will attempt to address each of the 10 red X's that Mr. Winger received in his presentation of Matthew 25:46. I'm taking the clips for this video from this particular video by Doreen Virtue. It's on her channel. You can see she's very popular. She has a lot of subscribers. I don't know much about her. Based on the video, it sounds like she was an influential leader and writer in the New Age movement. And Melissa Doherty, who's also on this panel in this video, also came out of the New Age and into Christianity. And in this video, they're addressing the idea, does everyone go to heaven? They're addressing a form of universalism that is not scriptural, which basically says all roads lead to heaven. A couple things I noticed about this video when I was doing this research was it's unlisted. And the comments are turned off as you can see here and also up here it says the live chat replay was turned off for this video if this is a good and helpful video i'm not sure why it's unlisted before i get to the red x's i want to address one thing that mr winger failed to tell us about concerning jesus he told us that jesus second coming will involve judgment but he didn't explain why jesus came the first time probably because that damages his argument let's see why jesus came the first time John 3.17 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. For God does not dispatch his Son into the world that he should be judging the world, but that the world may be saved through him. Jesus came to save the world, and that's exactly what he did. No future judgment can undo the salvation that Jesus has secured for the world. That's each and every person. And that includes the reconciliation of everything in the universe to God. Jesus will come and judge when he returns, but the salvation of all is secure. The foundation for the salvation of all is set, and no one could move it. Why would you want to move it? Our judge is also our savior. He has already done the saving. He will do the judging. Will he undo his work of salvation by his judging? Is he going to undo his own work? No. He will undo the work of the adversary, not his own work. Now on to Mr. Winger's red X's. Jesus in the Bible actually talked more about judgment and hell. Jesus did not talk about hell especially the christian version of hell which is an everlasting quote-unquote eternal torture chamber for those who do not believe in jesus in this life the mythological hell of christianity does not exist now the king james bible leads many people to believe in a hell but it mistranslates gehenna hades sheol and tartarus all as hell that's where we get our false ideas about hell It's from the King James Bible and many other Bibles that follow them in their mistranslation. And none of these places from the scriptures, Sheol, Hades, Gehenna, 
Tartarus, or even the lake of fire, the second death. None of these are everlasting or eternal. These places are Eonian. Their duration is within the confines of the Eonian times. He talks about his, his, his final judgment of the world. But in Matthew 25, 46, Jesus says that there's two groups of people. The judgment in Matthew 25 is not the quote-unquote final judgment, and it is not a judgment of individual people. This is a judgment of the nations. The two groups that are involved in this judgment are the nations and Israel, and Israel is not judged at this time, but the nations are judged for how they treated Israel, the brethren of Jesus. It's easy to focus on Matthew 25, 46 to say this is the final judgment of all individuals. They go to heaven or they go to hell. But to find the full context of this, we have to go back to verse 31 of Matthew 25 to see the stage set by Christ himself. Jesus himself sets the stage for the judgment that culminates in Matthew 25, 46. We read in verses 31 through 33. Now, whenever the Son of Mankind may be coming in his glory and all the holy messengers with him, then shall he be seated on the throne of his glory. And in front of him shall be gathered all the nations, and he shall be severing them from one another, even as a shepherd is severing the sheep from the kids. And he shall be standing the sheep indeed at his right, yet the kids at his left. We see clearly that gathered before him are all the nations. These are the nations outside of Israel. And these will be judged for how they treated the brethren of Jesus in the nation of Israel. As he inaugurates and establishes his kingdom, he will be placing the nations upon the earth in accordance with how they treated Israel. It's as simple as a king setting up his kingdom upon the earth and putting the nations where he determines that they should be. We can see that this event, the judging of the nations by the Lord, was prophesied even before Jesus' words in the book of Joel. Joel 3, 1-2 through 2 and verse 12 from the concordant version of the Old Testament. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall reverse the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also convene all the nations and bring them down to the vale of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them there concerning my people and my allotment, Israel, whom they disperse among the nations, and my land which they apportion. Verse 12. Let all the nations be roused and ascend to the vale of Jehoshaphat, for there I shall sit to judge all the nations from round about. This judgment occurs at his return, at the end of this eon, at the establishment of his 1,000 year reign with the saints in Israel on the earth. The judgment of the individuals occurs after this judgment of the nations. It occurs after the 1,000 year reign of Christ on the earth. So there are two different judgments here, the judgment of the nations and the judgment of individuals at the great white throne. The Matthew 25 judgment is not the great white throne judgment. The judgment of the nations occurs on the earth in the vale of Jehoshaphat. The judgment at the great white throne occurs after this present earth is destroyed. And another great evidence to show that what Mike is referring to is not the final judgment of all individuals is the fact that not all individuals will be alive at this time, as we see from Revelation 20. Revelation 25 from the concordant literal New Testament, the rest of the dead do not live until the thousand years should be finished. One group goes away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous, the other group, goes into everlasting or eternal life. As we've already seen, this is not a judgment on individuals, but a judgment on nations. And Mike is using a very poor translation. I don't know if he's using the King James Version, the ESV, the English Standard Version. Let's take a look at Matthew 25, 46 in the Greek with a good translation and a bad translation. Matthew 25, 46 from the Concordant from the King James and from Bible Hub. Bible Hub provides the Greek and also Bible Hub has its own translation here in the orange and will go away these into punishment eternal, but the righteous into life eternal. The word eternal is a very bad mistranslation here and here of the Greek Ionian here and here. At least Bible Hub is consistent in using the same word, but it's just a crappy word. 
Things aeonian are things that pertain to the eon. The eons are durations of time with a beginning and an end. Things aeonian have a beginning and an end. Things eternal do not have a beginning and an end because eternity does not have a beginning and an end. So eternal is a horrible translation for punishment or for life because the punishment and the life would have a beginning, therefore it cannot be eternal. The King James, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Their words are just as horrible, translating Aeonian as everlasting and eternal, but like the King James in many ways, it's not consistent. It's using two different words right in the very same context where the Greek is the exact same word, Aeonian. Then we have a correct translation from the concordant literal New Testament, and these shall be coming away into chastening eternal. Aeonian, yet the just into life Aeonian. We have Aeonian here and here in the Greek translated as Aeonian here and here. So it's consistent and it's pretty much a transliteration. The only way to be closer would be just to use the word Aeonian. But I also want us to focus on this word Colossian, which is translated by Bible Hub as punishment and the King James as punishment, but the concordant literal New Testament translates it as chastening. That word Colossian, which is translated chastening by the concordant literal New Testament, it means punishment or chastening with a view to amendment, which is in contrast to punishment, which is penal and only for the sake of punishment. There is no hope to amend or change the one being punished. So we see that Mike's translation of Matthew 25, 46 is very bad. It does not follow the Greek Aeonian, Aeonian, and Colossian. He is following a poor translation, which leads people to believe in everlasting punishment and life eternal, which is even an unscriptural term. It is a false expression. If you're going to take Jesus's word seriously, if you take his word seriously about heaven, you got to take his word seriously about hell. Because he talks about both of them in the same sentence. Mike, I take Jesus' words very seriously. But the words from your crappy translations, I spit on them. <coughs> and where, pray tell, in Matthew 25, 46, does it speak about heaven or hell? And if there's two yeah. groups of people, one eternal life one et eternal judgment it's vital also that we understand the basis of the judgment of the nations which is further proof that this is not a judgment of individuals in verse 33 through 40 of matthew 25 jesus explains to us why certain nations are sheep and will be having eonian life and he shall be standing the sheep indeed at his right yet the kids at the left then shall the king be declaring to those at his right hither blessed of my father enjoy the allotment of the kingdom made ready for you from the disruption of the world for i hunger and you give me to eat i thirst and you give me drink a stranger was i and you took me in Naked, and you clothed me. Infirm am I, and you visit me. In jail was I, and you come to me. Then the just will be answering him, saying, Lord, when did we perceive thee hungering, and nourish thee, or thirsting, and we give thee drink? Now, when did we perceive thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and we clothed thee? Now, when did we perceive thee infirm, or in jail, and we came to thee? And answering, the king shall be declaring to them, Verily, I am saying to you, Inasmuch as you do it to one of these, the least of my brethren, you do it to me. Jesus gives the reason that these nations will be judged to be right and be on his right as sheep nations. Verse 35, For I hunger and you give me to eat. I thirst and you give me drink. A stranger was I and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. Infirm am I and you visit me. In jail was I and you come to me. If this is applied to individuals, this would be telling us that an individual is saved by their works. We know that this is absolutely not true based on the entirety of what Scripture teaches, and more specifically what the Apostle Paul said concerning grace, concerning works, and concerning salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For in grace, through faith, are you saved. And this is not out of you, it is God's approach present, not of works, lest anyone should be boasting.
If salvation comes through doing good deeds to Jesus' brethren, then Paul is a liar. Newsflash, Paul is not a liar. All individuals are saved in God's grace, not by their works. Mike Winger's unfortunate and poor treatment of this judgment from Matthew 25 may lead you to think that you can attain heaven, attain to Jesus' right side as a sheep by good works. Do not believe this. His treatment of this passage is completely wrong, other than probably what he said about taking Jesus' words seriously. But he is not giving you Jesus' words. He's giving you words from crappy translations. Go to the Greek. Dig as deep as you can. Find teachers that will teach you the truth about what Jesus actually said, based on the Hebrew and Greek scriptures, not based on poor translations. Please do not try to work your way to heaven. You cannot do it. And if you could do it, what was the point of Jesus dying? There is none. Instead, believe the good news. Christ died for your sins. He was entombed. He was roused the third day. God is at peace with you. Be at peace with God. If this video has helped you, I ask you to hit the like and subscribe down below. And to watch a video concerning the great white throne judgment of individuals, watch this video next.